Mike Shoesmith, of course, is the executive editor of PNN News and Ministry Network. And, Mike, I know that you're coming from the Canadian headquarters of PNN today. And yes. Yeah, and, and I know that you have, you've got a take on this shooting as well, because I understand you're quite upset about some of the things Obama has said and, 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 and this administration's reaction to it and, and things that you know about Canada and the, quote, gun-free zone. So I'm going to leave you alone and let you talk for a minute. It was in Charleston, South Carolina. Listen, mm. there were two travesties that happened in that building that day. Uh, the first to happen was that everyone entering that building were forced to uh, <laughs> to uh, jettison their Second Amendment right to um, to uh, not have to go to participate in what I call the sitting duck syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, even in a church. I'm telling you, man. I have been privy to some information lately about a book that's coming out that people are going to should start getting excited about getting their hands on now because it deals with all of this as we get closer and closer and we get deeper and deeper into a time when evil is going to get worse and worse in the world. I am very excited about a new book that's coming out um, and it deals with all of this. More on this in, in the weeks and months ahead. Uh, but um, uh, listen, folks. The first travesty was that these people entered into a building unarmed and in, incapacitated, if you will. Yeah, and, tra and, and trapped. Uh, and trapped. The guy reloaded five times, Mike. Five times. And the people had to just sit there and take it as he pumped 45 caliber ammunition into their bodies. Five times they reloaded. And they could do nothing because they were not allowed to have a gun. Sit there and take it. And that is a travesty. That is an atrocity, and I'm going to tell you why in a moment here. But, uh, I mean, the reason is obvious, but I'll tell you why on a more global scale. Uh, because, um, listen, this whole business of Obama getting up and blaming this, this all on, uh, on the, uh, the amount of guns and, and so on, but all of this is happening. All of it is happening in gun-free zones, yes. sitting duck zones. All of it is happening in these places. And if you go into, say, a Walmart where people have the, in, in states where people have the right to defend themselves, you are in the safest place on earth. Oh. Or if you go into a Walmart in Canada, you better uh, watch your back. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. I'm looking at the Toronto Police Service website here, Carl, and they have the statistics for gun shootings in Toronto, okay? Mm -hmm. and to, now, this is a gun-free zone mm -hmm. in Canada, one city in Canada. In 2012, they had, in a gun-free zone, 117 gun shootings. Yeah. In 2012, in a gun-free zone, yeah. with 143 victims. Right. Okay, that's from the Toronto, the Toronto Police website, okay? Now, that was 2012. 2015, we're only six months into the year. They're already up to 100, Carl. So, 100 yeah. shootings so far this year in a gun-free zone with 133 victims so far in a gun-free zone in Toronto. Toronto is literally a war zone, so in see, a gun-free zone. So, see, Mike, here's the thing. These liberals that are pushing for these gun control laws, they can't be this stupid. They can't be this stupid. Because there's no such thing as a gun-free zone, because criminals don't obey the law. They are going to have guns. We say, th I've said it to him blue in the face, Mike Bates, huge Second Amendment uh, uh, supporter and, and speaker and, and pundit, and he's screamed it till he's blue in the face. Books have been written. Articles have been written. Uh, politicians have screamed it. Uh, the NRA people have screamed it. There's no such thing as a gun-free zone. There are, you know, gun-free for, for innocent people, for legal people. But so you're using statistics in Canada where people, citizens are not allowed to have guns, but yet there's all these killings, all these shootings, all this gun violence in so-called gun-free zones. There's no such thing. The only people who are free from guns are innocent people who need to protect themselves, like the people in Charleston in the church. They were not allowed by law to have guns in the church, and this thug, this idiot, this, this, this psychopath, he knew it. And that's where he went to do his killing, because he's a coward. He committed a cowardly act, and he knew he would not be fired back at. 
You know, we look at Obama's statement, you know, that these types of uh, mass shootings don't happen on the kind of frequency that they happen in the U.S. But, you know, here we just have evidence from the Toronto, Toronto police's own website. Hundreds of shootings per year in a, non, in a gun-free zone. But we look, we listen to Obama's statement, and we have to ask the question, in what other country is there a level of, of the amount of evidence that supports some of this being staged? I mean, we look at Sandy Hook. Uh, there are very few organizations out there besides PNN, the PNN Network, which are actually doing solid, sound investigation into Sandy Hook still. And the evidence is still piling up, Carl, that that was a staged event, a, gu- a part of the gun grab road show, as some people are calling it, and that the Sandy Hook the elementary school shooting never even happened. The evidence is mounting for that. Now, you and I are not saying that it never happened. I'm certainly not saying it, but listen, I have interviewed uh, citizen journalists who have been on the ground there doing the groundwork uh, in uh, Newtown, Connecticut, uh, going there, taking pictures, uh, doing the investigation, and I've interviewed these people. Those interviews have been heard hundreds of thousands of times, and every time I do an interview with these people, I say, if anyone out there has evidence that this really happened, Email me, I will put you on the radio immediately, and no one is coming forward. But you know what? There are tremendous efforts to cover up, to silence people who are looking into this. Uh, Wolfgang Halbig, uh, attempts have been made on his life. He's the guy who's doing all the FOIA requests to get the information to the public that has been sequestered by... The state police in Connecticut, the local law enforcement. By the way, local law enforcement in that area has been paid millions of dollars mm-hmm. to silence them. And this is all documented, and they call it grieving money mm-hmm. to the tune of millions of dollars to the police. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And some people call would call that hush money. But yeah. they're calling it the grieving money, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so, I mean, the, the evidence for staging this gun grab roadshow, I mean, look. What's the first thing Obama does uh, minutes, you know, maybe an hour or two later, is he comes out and he blames the, um, the uh, proliferation of guns in America, yeah. where all of this is happening in places where there are no guns. Exactly. If, people, if those people had a gun to defend themselves, that would have been over in a matter of seconds. Exactly. Well, let me just, let me just comment on that, Mike. Let's, 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 let's pause right here and think about that. So I said a minute ago, they can't be this stupid. They've got to know. So if they're the complete idiots and imbeciles, and I don't think they are. I mean, they're completely unable to deal with any element of reality, and I don't think that's, that's true. Or they're doing this on purpose. They have an agenda. Right. They're driving an agenda, and the agenda is to get our guns away because that Second Amendment has stood in the way of America being conquered for 200 years because 100 million citizens in America have a multiplicity of guns. They own guns. 100 million. So if 99 million gun owners in America decided they were not going to give up, they were going to give up their guns, they were not going to use them in any kind of rebellion, you still have a million armed, a million, bigger than any standing army in the world, a million armed citizens. But there are 100 million of us. And they they, yeah. they they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do about it. So I, I, a lot of people right. think these things are being staged. Some people think that this was being staged. Now, now that well, doesn't mean people to back that up already. Though. Well, I, I know but it doesn't mean these people didn't really die. It is a real tragedy. Right. But was this right. guy used? Because instantly behind this horrible death, murder, mayhem, terrorist attack tragedy comes Obama saying. We got to take up everybody's guns now. We we've got to do something. We're just look at us. We're a laughing stock. Nowhere else in the world does this happen. Right behind it comes the agenda. And we have these young men who are linked to are linked to uh, psychotropic drugs. Are they being used as mules to carry the agenda into these gun free zones? I mean, look at this 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 uh, senator, uh, Clementa Pinckney. I mean, that guy was a senator. He was in the meeting. He was one of the people killed. He met with Hillary Clinton the same day, hours before he was shot dead. He had a meeting with Hillary Clinton. Some people might call that coincidence. 
I'm not a big fan of coincidences. Yeah. I, I really I think people, we need to look more. But you know what? She's gotten away with Benghazi. She looks like she's going to get away with getting the, the, uh, the Democrat nomination to run for president. I'm just saying, uh, when, when yeah. you look at the Clinton death pool, is this just another addition to the Clinton death pool? And I there, mean, was he yeah. taken out? And there have been books and movies written about the Clintons and their association to all of these mysterious deaths. It's, it, it's amazing. And so Obama comes out and says these unbelievable things ridiculous things, untrue things, lie. he lies, okay? And then the Charleston mayor, I can't remember his name, but he comes out and he says, look, there are far too many guns out there. That was his statement. Far too, all right, wait a minute. Far too many guns out there? What does that mean? Out where? In the hands of criminals? I agree. There are far too many guns in the hands of criminals. I agree. Far too many guns out there? What does that mean? I've been around guns all my life. I've owned guns. I've carried guns. I have a permit to carry guns. I've, I've never uh, uh, committed a gun crime in my life. And there are millions of citizens like me. Far too many guns in the hands of innocent, uh, law-abiding citizens like myself. Is that what he means? And, and by the way, if we're going to take away those far too many guns, who's going to be left with the guns? The government you know, and, the, and, the, and the criminals. And sometimes the, the government, government and the criminals. And sometimes the government, the government and the criminals, the criminals are the same things. Yeah, go ahead, <laughs> Mike. People. we got to take right, a break, yeah. but go ahead. Take a minute, and then All we're right. going to take a break, and we'll come back to you. Well, I just wanted to say that in Florida, where there is a, where there is a right to carry and protect yourself from, uh, from bad guys, from criminals, uh, both civilian and government, uh, there have been relatively few school shootings, and in just about every one, the only dead person was the one who uh, came into the school to do the harm. But in Canada, when somebody goes into a school to do the shooting, uh, it's devastating. Uh, dozens of lives are lost, and I just think people need to take a step back and look at the facts in this case. Uh, yeah. The president is dead wrong once again. Obama, immediately after the Charleston massacre in this church, immediately he comes out with, with his statement, you know, that, uh, well, just one more time, innocent people are killed because somebody could get their hands on a gun. Yeah, well, the innocent people were killed because they were not allowed to have a gun in church under South Carolina law. But the criminal did have a gun and could get his hands on one because there is no gun law that you can pass or that could have been passed that would have pro prohibited what happened in that church. Well, Somebody, there's, no gun law, there's no gun law prohibiting uh, the hundreds of uh, victims in Toronto every year that suffer from gun violence, is there? I mean, no. Michael Moore... Did, did a did a did a movie a few years back bowling for Columbine after the Columbine shootings. We still haven't got to the bottom of all that, by the way. But he went into Canada, into my hometown of all places, and he went and interviewed uh, quote unquote people who said, "Oh, we never lock our doors. We're the safest place in the world." You know. Meanwhile, listen, folks. I live in Canada. We lock our doors, and yeah. I have an alarm system in my home that calls the cops immediately. If anything is going on in my house that ain't supposed to be going on, the cops are called immediately. Canada is not the place, the uh, utopic uh, uh, existence that uh, Michael Moore made it out to be. But here, you know, and um, <clears throat> and uh, he uh, he uh, went in front of a uh, Taco Bell uh, in my hometown, and he interviewed people on the street, and they are all like, "Oh yeah, Canada's awesome," you know, and. Uh, uh, last year, that same Taco Bell was robbed at gunpoint. <laughs> right. That Taco Bell. Right. So, you know, when we look at the actual evidence on the ground, we see a very different picture. We see Canadians suffering from sitting duck syndrome. You know, a few years back at the Toronto Eaton Center, which is the most famous mall in the country, a guy walked into the food court, which is in the basement, and he just started shooting. And men were throwing themselves in front of their babies to save their lives, and the guy picked off a few people and just carried on. Even the security guards didn't have guards, but guess what? They this this you know what? If you guys can't tell that I am really frustrated about this, I'll tell you why. You look at who the Canadian government, uh, what what they uh, protect the the money. Because if you are a Brinks truck driver, an armored car driver in Canada, you qualify immediately to get a handgun to protect what? Yeah. to protect the money. Right. This really bothers me because children, there have been school shootings in Canada. Children suffer. Dozens of people die. Nobody's there. I mean, train the principal 
to that's effective gun control is being able to hit your target. Right. That's effective gun control. Train the principal. Train a teacher or two to use properly use, maintain, own a firearm to deal with this evil that's in the world. There's evil in the world. Yeah. And we can't deny that. We have got to stop keeping our heads shoved into the proverbial sand. We've got to stop putting money and a disarm the people agenda above the safety and security of our children and our public and, and ourselves, essentially. You know, in Canada, I so admire these states that have this uh, stand your ground law. Because in Canada, if somebody comes up to me with a gun in Canada and people have guns in Canada, bad guys who want to hurt me, I have to run for my life or give them what they want. What they want. I mean, I am a sitting yeah. duck. Well, and and think, it angers me, Carl. Think about this, Mike. In, in, in the civilization in which you live, as long as everything's relatively normal, you're about as safe as anybody anywhere in that the you know, police and, you know, Canada's got, you know, fairly decent people, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's not like a third world country. Okay. It's not Sudan, for example. However, if your shores were overrun by shiploads of, of uh, foreign invaders tomorrow, or, or if a gang of 30, 40, 50, 60, 100, couple of hundred thugs decided they were going to come down your street and wreak havoc this evening, you would be absolutely at their mercy. There would be nothing you right. could do. You couldn't run for your lives. If, they, if, if, if 20 or 30 of these thugs just came to your door and burst in the door to, to, to destroy your family in front of your eyes, there's nothing you could do. Nothing. So you see, we talk about one-on-one. -on -one, okay, you can pick up a baseball bat. You know, you can pick up your uh, your pellet gun you got in the corner to shoot squirrels with and bust him between the eyes with a pellet. You know, one-on-one. -on -one. You, right, you, you, right, right, you can right. take a hammer and crush his head in. Okay, but 30 thugs break your door down and come right. in? Or foreign invaders hit your shores because the only people that have guns are the cops and the government, and they're all running and screaming and crying because uh, you, you've got hundreds of thousands of foreign invaders that just landed? Your, your, your family. Right. In America, there are 100 right. million of us that are armed, many of us with the right. same, same equipment the military has. Right. But, you know, Obama and his thugs know all of this, and it's time to get the thugs out. Yep. My time is up. Yeah. Thanks it, for letting me rant, Carl. Okay, thank you.